We're going to make a good soup, vegetarian style. Uh, we're using the tofu shirataki noodle and uh, some wakame, which is seaweed. And usually they ask you to make, uh, in a lot of recipes, make a vegetable stock first. But to me, the easiest thing, instead of making a vegetable stock and throwing out the ingredients and just keeping the stock, why not just put what you would normally make the vegetable stock with, you know, carrots, onions, celery, maybe a little garlic, maybe a couple of other, uh, I don't know, turnip or whatever. And uh, so we're going to put this, dice it up, put it into the soup. No reason to waste it, and then you get the full flavor. And some fresh only bean sprouts, fresh ginger, garlic. So let's dice things up and let's get this going. The first thing is to, we're going to take care of this noodle. You have to rinse it and rinse it well and then we're going to put it in a skillet until it kind of pops, simmers um, to get all the moisture out of it and then you won't have that uh, salty seawater taste anymore. And what I mean by washing it, rinsing it, is not just to put the uh, colander in the sink and run water on it, but place it in a bowl, let the cold water run, it'll rinse off better here for about five minutes. And then also we're going to, the dried wakame, the seaweed, we're going to soak that for about ten minutes before we use it. So this recipe is fat free, gluten free, animal free. So everything, all the vegetables I'm going to sweat with no oil, just a high flame, adding the tomatoes later. See the garlic? Big pieces, could be smaller, could be larger. The onions, that's the size I cut them. The carrots, a little bit smaller. And the celery, about the same size as the carrots. And the ginger. Okay, now I'll let that sweat up a little. Then we'll add water to this and allow this to just cook. When the vegetables are tender, then we'll finish the soup. Oh, you could add other items to that to give different flavors, but it's the vegetables and everything else and that's it. No soy sauce. I'm keeping the sodium down low on this also. And just what's in here gives off a beautiful flavor. And if you notice, they're starting to sweat up a little. Even though olive oil or a little sesame oil in here at the end would be tasty, we're just going to go oil free only because even if it's a healthy oil, what does it still have? It still has calories. And I'd, I'd rather have calories from healthy food or healthier foods. Not that fat is not good for you, but we probably get enough in everything else that we eat. And to this I'm going to add a quart of water. That'll be cold water. Always use cold water, even you know, when you're cooking pasta, start off with cold water. I know it might seem easier if you put hot water in there, but there's a difference. What the difference is, I forgot, but I do it.
Now we'll just let this simmer for a few minutes. While the uh, soup is simmering, we got to take care of these wakame noodles which have been washed, drained, and now dried out. I added the tomatoes at this point to the soup. And I'll wait for the uh, green sprouts towards the end. They take a minute to cook. This wakame, I mean uh, these noodles, we're going to dry them out until you see them jumping a little. And then they'll be all set to use. Get that moisture out of there and we'll be free of that Actually, the amount of rinsing I did took most of the, uh, almost all of that ocean flavor out of them. And we're going to put those into the soup at the very end also. They're cooked noodles, so there's no reason to put them in there early. And we're giving this a good chance to cook and simmer maybe for about 20 minutes. Get all the flavor out of everything. Everything will be soft. And the wakame, that little bit of wakame that you saw early on, which was an eighth of a cup after being soaked, grew into this much. I like this. Mm. I'm going to make more recipes just using the wakame. It is so nice and tasty. That's if you enjoy that flavor, that seaweed taste. So, we just dry this up. They start jumping a little bit, like they are. We're just about done. See how they're moving? Are they still alive? That's a great noodle. It tastes much better than uh, the gluten-free noodles that you try to make with different flours like uh, rice flour, corn flour, and uh, how many other flours do I have? Garbanzo flour. This doesn't have like an, a different taste. This tastes very close to a real noodle, like an egg noodle. Okay, that should take care of that. Now we'll just wait for the uh, stock to simmer. The vegetables are tender. I put the salt in there ready and a little hot sauce, which is optional. We put the noodles. And we're going to look at the ratio of liquid to vegetables to know that we have enough stock. I mean, I'm not looking for a lot of liquid because I want to have a nice heavy like what minestrone looks like minestrone that's a lot of vegetables making the spoon stand up and once we put the wakame in there also That looks good, I like that. There's not a lot of liquid in there, just enough to hold everything. And then, you can have it like this. 
Let me add the bean sprouts now. This will take like a half a minute to cook. That's a good solid meal there. Now you can either keep it liquidy looking like this or you can do what I do in a lot of soups that are similar to this <clears throat> is allowing everything so the vegetables don't sink to the bottom I put a tablespoon of cornstarch and a tablespoon of water and make a little paste smooth it out with your finger and then when you add this to the boiling soup you'll still have the nice clear color but what you'll have is a little heavier a little thicker than just water and you find that that lays in your mouth longer the liquid and you get a better taste of everything so we add that and what do you think they use when they make uh, egg drop soup same thing either arrowroot or cornstarch to thicken up that face fake chicken bakes that they use in those Chinese restaurants you think they make big pots, pots of uh, chicken stock I don't think so that would be too much work for them and not cost effective either so now that we have that the last thing that's going to go in there scallions and you can also just throw the scallions on top of the soup when it's in a plate and when you start to eat this you find that you might finish the entire pot but it's good this is enough for uh, two people as a starter as your soup on a, in a meal or this is your meal right here Let's see how that looks in a soup plate. The second that comes to a boil, it's done. The cornstarch takes no time in cooking, but gives it a little, little body. nice color looks pretty healthy to me that's good enough now if you don't mind having oil you put a few drops of uh, sesame oil into this How's that? A couple of bowls of that in there with ease and a little leftover. I hope you enjoy that and I'm going to have mine right now.